Good evening and welcome to the Olympic Zone. Lots to celebrate mm -hmm. here tonight, huh? Oh, what we do, and gold medalist Meryl Davis is here to join the party, but we're also, hi, we're also <laughs> looking ahead to a challenging night for yeah. America's figure skaters. But let's begin with the victory on ice. Women's hockey, United States was trailing by a goal in the third period when this happened. She had Nurse on her left. Long pass ahead to Monique Labrou. Moving in on Chavez. She scores! Monique Lamoureux Miranda scoring on the breakaway to tie things up. That forced overtime. And of course, the USA lost to the Canadians during overtime in Sochi four years ago. So the tension was extraordinarily last night. OT then turned into a shootout, and it was Monique's sister who stepped up big. We go round by round. Jocelyn Lamoureux. Two goals apiece in the shootout. Lamoureux moving in on Zabanas. She beats and scores! <laughs> Jocelyn Lamoureux Davidson pulling off a play that she, so great it has a name. Uh, the play she calls the oops, I did it again. Faked out the goalie, worked perfectly, giving the Americans the advantage. Canada had to try and respond, and there you see goalie, U.S. goalie Maddie Rooney shutting the door, securing gold for the USA, and the celebration was on. <laughs> And the last four years have been an incredible experience for us leading up to this moment. And to walk away here today, Olympic champions, I'm just, I'm so proud and honored. It's indescribable. I mean, to be able to represent my country and with 22 of my other teammates and best friends, um, it was a very special moment for us. I've pictured and visualized moments like that uh, thousands of times. And for it to, just to get the nod and for the coach to throw me out there, I'd, there was no doubt that it was going to go our way, and after I scored, I knew Maddie was going to—I knew she was going to stop it. I threw my stick on the bench, and I was first out the door. I knew it was going to happen. I'm glad she had no doubt. I wish she'd have told me everything was okay. <laughs> what, an amazing, morning. Yes, yes. what an amazing move that was, oh, too. I mean, some, it was a beautiful kind of goal. So, what? You win a gold medal like that, and you've got a group. Does anyone sleep? <laughs> I doubt many of them slept last night. Um, I mean, I'm sure they celebrated very well, but uh, an incredible group of girls, in particular women, I should say. Um, and you know a lot of them. I right? do. Yeah. Uh, Charlie and I actually spent a lot of time with the women's hockey team in Sochi. Mm -hmm. In the cafeteria at the games, athletes have the opportunity to get to know one another, yeah. talk yeah. about each other's sports, and um, just some really incredible women there. Yeah. So, so great. Yeah. Okay, we'll have more from Merrill coming up in a little bit, but first, yes, uh, more medals for Team mm -hmm. USA. Let's talk about that. Several American women are making these games even more exciting, including Michaela Schifrin. She grabbed her second medal of the 2018 in the Alpine Combined Skiing Event. Schifrin won gold in the giant slalom last week, but had to settle for silver this time around. But she says she's thrilled to be taking two medals home. Schifrin finished ahead of skiing legend Lindsey Vaughn as the two faced off for the first time. Vaughn was actually in the lead after the downhill portion, but missed a gate in the slalom, which of course ended her bid for a medal. This was most likely Vaughn's last Olympic race, but she's still <laughs> refusing to shut the door 100%, pretty much saying, you know, that you never know what might That's happen. That's right. But you don't, yeah. How about another American woman making snowboarding history? Jamie Anderson took the silver in the big air competition, missing the gold by less than 10 points. She already won gold in the slope style last week. That makes her the first woman snowboarder to win two medals at the same Winter Games. And gosh, look at how about that. Know, the men, <laughs> I know it's frightening. And the men also had a moment last night. American freestyle skier David Wise came through in the clutch to grab his second straight gold medal in the men's half pipe. He also took the gold in Sochi. By the way, Amer a fellow American, Alex Ferreira, took the silver, so they got the top two slots. That was yeah, great. Yeah. A couple of crazy falls in that event from mm -hmm. some other skiers last night, too. That was wild. Uh, the avalanche of medals, though, has pushed the U.S. into a more dominating fourth place in the medal count. Let's take a look at the leaders. No one catching Norway. Uh, they have had an unbelievable, uh, uh, unbelievable Olympics. The U.S., though, creeping up on both Canada and Germany in the medal count, so we'll see what happens here in these next few days. All right, Merrill is here, so uh, Americans probably will not medal tonight. It's going to be very difficult in the ladies' skating final. But if you were Marai Nagasu, uh, would you take a shot at that triple axel? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, the, just yeah. to consider alone that she could 
she will probably be the only woman doing the triple axel tonight. Um, that's huge. I mean, to be able to say that, to be able to enter Olympic competition with that in your back pocket is just incredible. And I think in addition to that, in terms of perspective for Mirai, she has already won an Olympic bronze medal with the team event, the figure skating team event, nailing that triple axel. And so I think it's worth the risk tonight. Um, yeah. Like you said, I, I don't think that she's necessarily uh, a favorite for a medal after tonight's or going into tonight's event. Um, so I don't know that she has um, nothing to lose, she, really, right? Yeah, I was, I was toying with the idea. I don't know if I want to say she has nothing to lose, but I think doing the triple axel will definitely serve her, her well no matter how it goes. Right, it's a calling card, too. I mean, you go, yeah, hey, hey, yeah. remember me. That's right. right. Yeah. And the, the other two American skaters, Brady Tennell, Karen Chen, what do you yes. expect out of them tonight? Well, I'm hoping for two solid skates from each of the skaters. Uh, Brady had an uncharacteristic mistake in the short program. Uh, her first fall, actually all season, which is yeah. just crazy it's that so hard to she's only fallen in competition so far once. Um, but, you know, Brady is still very new to this level of competition, to the international circuit, um, you know, to the Olympic Games. Karen uh, is a former U.S. national champion, and so hoping for a really great sk skate from her tonight. Um, it's a strong women's team, and I think the fact that none of our American ladies are necessarily in medal contention at the moment shouldn't be disheartening to, to watch. You know, you look at people like Nathan Chen with the comeback story, winning yeah. the free program, yeah. and it's those Olympic moments that whether or not you get a medal, you can create those lifelong memories that um, are really impactful. Let's talk about uh, the American women. Chloe Kim, Michaela Schifrin, <laughs> uh, the women's hockey team. Yeah. How inspiring must this be for little girls who yeah. are watching? Yeah. I mean, I, even I, I, I'm an adult. I wish I were 30 <laughs> years younger because, it, you know, it's just so inspiring. I love that you say that because I think that it's such an important time for women and young girls in, in the United States to have these stories to look up to, mm -hmm. whether it's the athletes specifically, um, you know, particular stories of the athletes. And of course, as an athlete, you want to be perfect. You want to put your best performances out there at the Olympic Games. But from a cultural perspective and sort of what our nation is going through and, and what women are going through right now, I think it's important that not everything is perfect. Right. <laughs> um, for young women and girls to be able to see Life is hard, things don't always go your way, but you push through and you represent yourself and you and you push yourself to be the best you can be. I think it's such an incredible moment for young women and girls to see that um, and yeah. celebrate that. So one thing about that game ending at 2.15 in the morning, there weren't a lot of little oh, girls right. getting to watch it <laughs> like they did with when the U.S. women won that first World Cup in soccer years ago yeah. that everybody was in the oh, afternoon. Yeah, yeah. 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 What would be your sport, by the way, if you're going back 20 or 30 well, years? Well, it, it said skeleton when I took that little <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Did, did everybody see the, uh, the Canadian hockey player last night when she got her silver, yeah. silver yeah. medal yeah. and then she took it off and uh, she was not happy about it? And took it off and then uh, put it out. So, you know, to me, as always, there's a grace in winning and then there's, a, of course, mm -hmm. another grace in losing. You've been there. Silver is, is, a, is a wonderful accomplishment, although when you've won four straight golds as a country, probably not as much. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I, I imagine that every athlete expects something different with every Olympic experience. And so it is hard for me to put myself in her shoes, and yet I feel feel a bit of a pit in my stomach when I see that. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think it's, I would imagine it's an action that took place before she had time to think about it. Yeah. But I really think it's something that she's going to regret. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and as a team, um, they're representing their country. And so I don't know that the whole team or the country wants that to be um, the symbol of their reaction to getting silver. And so I feel for her because I, yeah. I do think that it was probably just a spur of the moment reaction, and I think it was the wrong one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She'll, she'll, I think you're right. She will regret having regret done that. that. And yeah. I mean, we know Canadians; <laughs> they don't do They're that. Great. They're, They're great. great. They're great. They're awesome. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. 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 All right. We have we have something yes. from Meryl because unfortunately this is our last night. You have yeah, been just. You've been I know. You've been absolutely wonderful. Really Hold on, I got to do a triple sow cow to get to this. Thank you. Yay. Yes. Oh, guys. Okay.
I have enjoyed a little kiss and cry moment for you now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been such a pleasure. It yeah. really has been so wonderful, and I want to say thank you for the experience. It's, yeah. it's been wonderful. And thank you to all of you. Too. Yeah. You've had such great insights on what's going really on there have. that uh, only people like you really can appreciate. Right. So really great yeah. to have you. And here. I'm still working on the pay-per-view event for you and Charlie to get <laughs> yes. back together. So totally. with back. I got 45 bucks in the GoFundMe group, so we're ready to go. I we're will, close. I'll keep checking my emails, and we'll be in touch. Oh yeah, keep that. checking. <laughs> you were great. Yeah. You really were. Thank yeah. you very much. All right, coming up next, the pursuit of success in South Korea, the extreme measures they take to win, and has the pressure to succeed become too much? What we can learn from the Olympic host country next. Team USA to South Korea. We can't fly, but you know who can? Helping superheroes fly. United. Coming up. Well, let's turn our attention again to the Olympic host country. We've talked about it, about the size of Kentucky. Doesn't make the top 20 uh, when it comes to world population. But right now, it's in the top 10 for Olympic medals. <laughs> so what makes this small country loom so large on the world stage? NBC's Rich Lerner looks at the drive to succeed and all the pressure that comes with it. They're a fixture of Korean towns, large and small, Hagwon, after hours cram schools. 75% of all students here attend them to prepare for the all important university entrance exam that will determine their futures. Park Jun So is 16 and studies 12 to 13 hours a day. Except for my sleeping time and for one or two hours to eat, he says. It is that kind of work ethic that took this nation from post war devastation in the 1950s to the 11th largest economy in the world. And it's not just education. When a sport captures imaginations here, like short track, count on Koreans to excel. It is Ono to the line, and it is gold for Ono. Apollo Ono, the most decorated U.S. Winter Olympian ever, lived and trained in South Korea a decade ago. They are so relentless and almost obsessive in nature in their ability to tackle any challenge. At the New Study Academy, Principal Shim Gun Zup wants to chart a different path towards helping students deal with the pressure of parental expectations. I think we can build bridges of understanding between them and share what they can't share, he says. He has crushed the opposition. South Korea producing winning results in the academic and athletic world. Now trying to perfect that work-life balance. Aren't we all? They just punch way above their weight class, both on the business scene, economically in the world, and as you can see, in Olympics, in the Olympics as well. All right, still ahead, the search for peace and tranquility in the middle of Olympic madness. Former Detroiter Ann Thompson, our good friend, shows us what a trip to the South Korean temple looks like. Three missing. The excitement and the chaos of the Olympics can be overwhelming. There is a place, though, where you can leave the crowds and the noise and all of that Korean technology behind. Ann Thompson takes us to an oasis of peace and tranquility. <laughs> Enlightenment leads up these steps at Wuljongsa, a temple first built nearly 14 centuries ago. Inviting tourists to experience Korean Buddhism firsthand with a program called Temple Stay, offering a time to pause, set aside worries, and see yourself at the mercy of nature. In weather that feels like nine below, it gives new meaning to the concept of chill. This is morning service. In clothes you were given, you perform the prostrations of humility, connecting your forehead, elbows, and knees to the ground. The spirit is willing, but this flesh is not so flexible. The meals are modest, vegetarian, and you meditate, freeing yourself from the material desires that dominate our lives, seeking nirvana, if only temporarily. 
Such self-discovery requires focus. Wan Hong, the temple's vice abbot, tells me over tea, a cleansing ritual for the senses. You must relieve your mind of all distractions to reach the final goal of Buddhism. Nobody can teach you how to reach nirvana. Nobody can just hand it to you. If I point at the moon, don't be distracted by my finger. With the Olympic Games just nearby, there's a surge in business. Guests coming from all corners of the world. What is the one thing you hope people take away from Temple Stay? Of course, peace. Yes, peaceful, peaceful mind. And for this week, even for the most devout, a little of the Olympic spirit. Beautiful. Very nice. If yeah. I point at the moon, don't focus don't on my that's finger. That's right. Yeah. Pretty cool. There's your morsel for the night, Bernie. I like it. <laughs> I have a bigger morsel for yes, you here. Yes, indeed. A, a South Korean dish and fish tails from Sun. Oh All of that right after this break. Last year. Let's dig back into some soul food. When it uh, comes to seafood, I guess you'd say that some people would prefer that their fish not look all that much like fish. Oh right? boy. In tonight's soul food, we put Bernie to the test with a South Korean delicacy. Bernie, was it a challenge? It was, uh, first it's yellow fish, and okay. it turned out to be absolutely terrific, and the minor challenge was the guy eating it forgot what fish bring to the party. <laughs> Welcome back. Today, Korean fish. What kind? Of, and this is Sun, yeah, no. and this is Barbara, mm -hmm. and this is yellow fish. And this yes. is actually, if I don't mind, can I pick this up? Yes. This yes. is a fish with the skin still on it, and like that. <laughs> and so then everybody's not shaking their head. Don't do it. Don't eat it. But yes. what, how do you prepare it quickly? Well, this is um, just like that the shrimp. Just put them in a flour. Mm -hmm. And then just fry with oil. And did yes. you go down? No MSG or did you have No MSG? Did you go in a boat and you caught these oh, fish? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have to use a special uh, fishing pole. A, a special fishing pole. <laughs> what, was your, what was your bait? <laughs> <laughs> or oh, I'm afraid to ask. I'm sorry. So you just picked this up. Now you just eat this? Eat, yeah. Just yes, like just this? Just like that. All right, here it goes. Kids, I love you. Donna. <laughs> goes great with rice. Oh, my God. Go with the good. Rice you good, like huh? it? Oh, this is fantastic. Everything's good. Is there bones rice. in it? Yes. Yes. I've never seen fish without bones. Well, because it's been fried. Yes. Fabulous. Okay. Good. The thing is, Korean food is never use MSG or never preserve. Preserve. It's all fresh. Yes. You eat the whole thing? I can taste the well, bones. Well, no, you can pull the bones out. Yeah. <laughs> You're a good man. I gotta go the pull bones. these bones out. I'll be back later. <laughs> we don't want to kill Bernie. Kill your we didn't kill what Bernie. Kind of, what kind of insurance you got in here? I want to know. You know, I'm senior. I don't See you know. later. <laughs> she is a trip. What a genius to say, oh, bones? There's bones in there? <laughs> Who knew? But and I tell you, fish. it was so delicious and tasty. You thought it had been deboned, and you were just kind of going oh, right going after that. Right. Right. And that is no. It's now, bones. we want to announce Sun will make an appearance here tomorrow night. We've ordered extra security Live for the building. The program. It's yes. just going to be like Elvis is coming in. So <laughs> get ready. Oh, it'll be great. Well, it will be. Okay. And the recipe is on Click on Detroit. I need oh, to yeah. Excellent. I'm sorry. It looked delicious. Though. Yes, it was. We're digging in. All right, still ahead. It's a big night on the yeah. ice. Beauty and speed and prime time. We'll get you ready when we come back. Time to check the temperature for the Pyeongchang area. The current temperature in Pyeongchang is brought to you by the Nest Learning Thermostat. Because everyone likes easy. Sure do. Because everyone is on the go. Because we all like to save energy, but sometimes we slip up. Reaching up. Because sometimes we want it cool at night, then toasty in the mornings. Introducing the easy to use, energy saving, adjustable from everywhere, easy on the wallet and the eyes, Nest Thermostat E. E is for everyone. 
Hello, everyone. Mike Tirico at the International Broadcast Center coming up tonight on NBC. It's one of the most anticipated nights on the ice, the ladies free skate, featuring a trio of Americans while Russian skaters currently sit in first and second place after the short program. Plus, a trio of medals at stake in short track. We'll see an all-out sprint in the men's 500 meters, the chaos of the men's 5,000-meter relay, and South Korea seeking another gold on home ice in the women's 1,000 meters. All that and more coming up tonight on NBC. If anything tonight can top 2.15 this morning, it'll be a big night. Yeah. So thanks for joining us. We will be here again for our final edition, weekday edition of the Ozone tomorrow night at 7.30. And Sun will be here too. Be Headlining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stay up late for Local 4 News about midnight tonight. But first, we'll send you to South Korea for live Olympic coverage. Have a good night.